everyone, welcome back to another painting tutorial, uh, this time uh, using the Rollo Lightbringers from the Song of Ice and Fire game by Simon Miniatures. Um, these miniatures are great, they're already pre-assembled, they also are coloured based on what faction you want. So uh, if you do actually want to paint them, um, this is a, a half decent guide uh, to uh, Baratheons as an uh, overall um, faction, because most of the colours are the same. Uh, but these ones are light bringers and i'm going to be doing the flaming arrows uh slightly different um but hopefully will be quite effective um i'll say this this probably be my catchphrase for my painting tutorials uh this painting method won't win you any competitions but it will get your models onto the table quicker and um we've all been in our slump where we have plenty of unpainted miniatures and that motivation to do it so i can tell you now it's quite quick and easy to do with these guys because I'll be using as many contrast paints as I can so that takes off a few steps and um, overall should be um, getting your guys onto the table uh, and that's it so if you ever want any more specific ones um, I will uh, try and uh, acquire some more models and get them done uh, but coming up uh, I might be doing some um, Baratheon Queen's Men so getting some swords down so let's have a look at the models and get them painted Okay everyone, so here we have a base coated um, light bringer. Uh, I've used a uh, light grey spray paint, an army painter spray paint called Uniform Grey. And I also have a pot of Uniform Grey just in case I miss any bits uh, during the base coating stage. Or if I go any go over any bits that I want to remain uh, grey uh, for contrast painting. So that's it. So. We have it here. So first of all, we're going to be doing all the metal areas uh, with a um, army painter paint called Gun Metal. I suppose you could use any uh, dark uh, metal colour, uh, lead belcher, uh, iron hands, uh, steel, and uh, that should be enough. Uh, we're also going to be doing um, these little bits on the end of the bow. Uh, by uh, you can see. Got the bits on the end of the bow, we're going to do metal and we're going to do uh, a little bit by here as well because these are fire um, bows so they need that little extra reinforcement. So do the chain mail, the greaves, uh, helmet and any other metal areas you want to do and we'll come back after that step. Okay, so this is the metal areas are all done so you can see the greaves, the chain mail, the bits on the end of the bow and then by the hand there just a little guard against the flame. So uh, for the next step you're going to want this all to be dry and then we'll be using Citadel Colour, uh, Contrast, Basilicanum Grey and uh, this really uh, tones down the metal areas and uh, gives it a good uh, going over with the, the magic that Contrast does. So we'll wait for everything to dry, apply it and then we'll see how it looks. Okay so now we have uh, the paint dried so looks quite nice on the model. Uh, so now what we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing the tunic areas uh, yellow. I'm doing it yellow because obviously they're Baratheons, but you can do it any colour. I suppose you could uh, do it any uh, house, uh, uh, vassal house that you want to do. Uh, but I'm going to be doing yellow in the tunic areas, um, mainly on this model. So most of them will be this little bit coming down and then obviously on the arms as well. Um, but your discretion, how uh, you want to do it. So for that we will be using a, a Vallejo paint and it, it is going to be uh, golden brown. Um, it's quite good because it's, it's a fairly thick coat and yellow is quite difficult to do. Probably still need about two coats on this so we'll do the first coat, have a look. Then we'll do a second coat because uh, the base uh, coat does tend to show underneath. So bring on the first coat. Okay, so this is the first coat done. Um, you can see it does look a bit patchy, so we are going to be doing a second coat. Um, try not to do any more than that, uh, and that is it. So we will come back after coat number two. Okay, so that is the second coat done, and looks a lot better now. So uh, we're going to continue doing uh, the yellow tunic, and we're going to be going over it with uh, Citadel Colour Contrast uh, iodine yellow. So remember, give this a good shake. If you haven't got a mixing ball in it already, I would do so. And just give it a good old shake and go over all the yellow parts. Uh, make sure the yellow paint is uh, dry first as well. 
Okay, so this is the contrast paint on and dried. Uh, does look quite nice on the, the yellow areas. Uh, so next we're going to be moving on to the quiver, the arrows and um, the trousers. And we, we're going to be using uh, contrast wildwood. And now if any of the areas have not been base coated or you've gone over anything else, uh, use uniform grey because uh, that matches uh, the base coat. And then if you used any other base coat, just go over it with that before you put the uh, contrast paint on. Okay, so that's done. Uh, you can see the arrow, uh, the quiver, and the backs of the legs done there. Uh, I forgot to mention as well, if there's any padded uh, armour, uh, do that. So there isn't any on this one, but some of them you can see you'll have them uh, on the arms. Uh, so that is that done. So next, uh, we're going to be trying to keep with the black yellow theme. So any other uh, cloth areas, you can see you've got the one in the middle there, or maybe anything on the arm. Uh, we're going to be uh, going over the grey area with uh, contrast black templar, and we're also going to be doing that on the bow as well, the, basically the area that isn't uh, already done metal. And that is going to be it. So we'll come back and have a look at that when it's done. Okay, so you can see the underneath area has been done with the contrast black templar as well as the bow. It looks quite, gives it quite a nicer finish. Um, so next up we're going to be doing the boots, gloves and belt and pouches uh, with uh, dryad bark. And we're also going to be doing like the tr leather trim on the armour as well. So a lot of it uh, just... A on the edge of the chain mail you can see scale mail and also the straps on the armor as well so on the back of the greaves and there's a few straps here and there as well so we'll do that next okay so that's all these areas done you can see here so you can see the boots uh, you might be able to make up the straps uh, the little uh, pouch on the back and the gloves and there's just check some they are sometimes some straps under the armor to keep the shoulder plates in place and that is done so uh, next step we're going to be using Doomball Brown and some of the quivers have a little bit of strapping on them we're just going to be going over that with uh, that so it's quite a quick step this one uh, so I'll show you what it looks like after okay so I'm going to show you on this model because the other one is not that clear as you can see the Doomball Brown on the little straps on the quiver there so next step, we're basically going to be preparing a lot of areas that's going to have a, um, some contrast paint added. So the skin, um, so uh, that is it's all going to be done with um, Corax White um, to bring out the pigment a little bit more in the contrast paint. So we're going to be doing the skin. Uh, you can do some hair areas or facial hair if you uh, want to do that with the contrast paint. Uh, the fletching on the arrows and we're also going to be painting the flame on the uh, flaming arrow white as well. So we'll do that, have a look at it and then we're going to be using the contrast paints. So here we go, we've got the white areas done. So we've got the fletching on the arrows, the skin and the flaming arrow. So remember if you want any hair areas that you want to have contrast paint on, uh, do them as well at this point. So first step we're going to do the skin and we're just going to be going over it with contrast Gilliman flesh. Okay so that's the face done so next uh, while it's drying we can do the uh, fire on the arrow and we're going to be using Tesseract Glow for this one. Um, so Normally used for Necrons, but I think uh, this works quite well and uh, gives a good uh, wildfire look to the flaming arrows. Um, if there's any facial hair on the models, probably best to go over that in white when it's dry, uh, so you can uh, do the facial hair if you're using contrast paint. Okay, so that is done. It's still a little wet, but uh, when it dries it does look uh, quite nice. Uh, it's uh, a bit easier than painting normal flames, I find, so it's just white and then uh, the technical paint. Uh, obviously, if you don't like the idea of wildfire, I know in the books and series the Brathians didn't use it, but they, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, the Lord of Light would approve of uh, something as flammable as uh, wildfire. So next, we're going to be doing the fletching on the arrows, and we're going to be using uh, Apothecary White, another contrast paint. 
Okay, so that is done. Uh, you're not really going to be able to see it too well. Uh, so uh, next up, do the hair, facial hair, uh, any colour you want really, what, whatever you normally use uh, for facial hair or hair. Um, so once you've done that, we're going to be doing the uh, Baratheon um, emblems uh, that are embossed or on the armour. Sometimes you'll find it on banners as well. Uh, so these ones are all the Lord of Light variants so the stag is on fire uh, so first of all we're going to be doing the background so that's in between the flames and just behind the stag uh, we're going to do it nice and bright so we're going to be using uh, evil sun scarlet so that should really uh, pop the uh, stag in the middle out and really show uh, who uh, loyalty these uh, soldiers are to Okay, so that's the red bit did, uh, done on the sigil, so um, what we're going to do now while we wait for that to dry, we're going to go over all the belt buckles or uh, rivets uh, with uh, the metal colour you used before. Um, we're not going to be putting any uh, wash or uh, contrast on it, so we will stick out uh, from everything else, which will be good. Uh, and then we will come back and see how that looks. Okay, so that's belt buckles done and then a few rivets here and there on the model. Um, so you, most you'll find them on the belt on the uh, shoulder sections of the armour. So that's done, the um, red bit in the middle should be dry so going around the flame on the outside we'll be using aerial yellow. So um, this is why I didn't use a white uh, base coat for the contrast yellow paint. Uh, I tend to use that more for the banners and shields for um, the Baratheons. Uh, so we'll do that and then we can continue on with the sigil. Okay, so that is done, and this one now, this one is, I think, the smallest one of all the uh, poses of these guys. It still looks quite good, but I think this one, being the biggest one, looks a little bit better. So, wait for the yellow to dry, and then go over the stag bit with black. You can do whatever you want, use contrast paint, uh, a regular matte black paint. Uh, so we'll have a look, see if I don't mess it up on uh, these ones we got here. Okay, so that is done now. So the final bit of paint on this model. So I base coat all my movement trays uh, leather brown. That's another army paint, a spray paint. Uh, so we're going to be matching the base on this model to that. And then we'll add all the texture, uh, all the grass, etc. to it. So matches it. Leather brown, army painter. So put that over the model and then you're good to go. Okay so that is the base done and should match uh, the movement tray. Uh, you might want to give it a second coat just uh, there's a little bit of grey poking through. Um, so next step then is just PVA glue, static grass, um, whatever static grass you want to use um, and then add a few tufts here and there. Uh, I like using different fl coloured flowers uh, for my Baratheons. Uh, so we'll see the finished results on this model and then the whole unit. Okay, so there's a bit of static grass and a little uh, some purple flowers here to finish off the model. So we'll have a look what they all look like in the tray. Okay, and there we have the whole unit done with the movement tray done as well. So overall, quite easy, fairly quick to get them done. I uh, hope you found this uh, paint tutorial quite useful. Um, you know, obviously not going to win you many competitions, but we'll get you uh, yellow plastic stuff on the table nice and painted and quite effective from a distance until someone picks them up and has a closer look. So uh, if you want me to do any other uh, get, um, Song of Ice and Fire stuff, my friend has some Night Swatch stuff that he uh, might not end up painting himself, so I could always give them a go and they'll be doing some free folk. So, uh, I could also do um, Baratheon Queensman because I'm buying a box of them soon. So let me know if you want any more.